and just notice uh, any impulse to be destructive and try to refrain from that in, in thought, uh, in action, in speech. Also, we want to refrain and ask you to refrain from stealing. Again, we're not in the physical presence or proximity uh, with each other, but we might want to grab onto something, a thought, an idea, space that doesn't belong to us and wasn't freely given. So just to notice a tendency to grasp on and then to let go. Okay. And this whole practice is also about releasing you know, harsh self-judgments. So when that arises, try to let that go as well. Again, we are not with each other. And so there's no real threat of us acting on any sexual misconduct, but it can come about in the way we look at each other, in our speech, um, in our tone. So just notice when a sexual impulse arises and let it go and refrain from acting on it. We also ask that we try to refrain from lying. And that doesn't mean that we tell the truth all the time uh, when it's not our time to speak or not our space to speak, or even in an attempt to trump another's truth telling. But just to refrain from not telling the truth is what we are asking um, all of us to abstain from. And then lastly, uh, to uh, not be in the space and not enter the space intoxicated. So this is a Buddhist space, Buddha space, where we uh, cultivate clear seeing and we know that being intoxicated impairs that. So that's what we ask you to do. So now I am going to share with you touching the earth practice. And this is called the five earth touchings. Uh, it involves, it involves um, bowing, but if you don't want to do that or can't do that, just imagine that you're touching the earth. I will also invite the bell. That's what they call it in the Plum Village tradition, not ringing the bell, but inviting the bell. So I will invite the bell. There will be invitations to breathe three times You'll have an opportunity to touch the earth as your witness, if you choose to, or just imagine that you are supported by the earth as your witness, uh, your witness to your uh, aspiration uh, to be enlightened. So it begins with this statement. In gratitude, I bow to all generations of ancestors in my blood family. You are now invited to touch the earth or imagine you are touching it. I see my mother and father whose blood, flesh, and vitality are circulating in my own veins and nourishing every cell in me. Through them, I see my four grandparents, their expectations, experiences, and wisdom have been transmitted from so many generations of ancestors. I carry in me the life, blood, experience, wisdom, happiness and sorrow of all generations. The suffering and all the elements that need to be transformed, I am practicing to transform. I open my heart, flesh and bones to receive the energy of insight, love and experience transmitted to me by all my ancestors. I see my roots in my father mother, 
grandfathers, grandmothers, and all my ancestors. I know I am only the continuation of this ancestral lineage. Please support, protect, and transmit to me your energy. I know wherever children and grandchildren are, ancestors are there also. I know that parents always love and support their children and grandchildren, although they are not always able to express it skillfully because of difficulties they themselves encountered. I see that my ancestors tried to build a way of life based on gratitude, joy, confidence, respect, and loving kindness. As a continuation of my ancestors, I bow deeply and allow their energy to flow through me. I ask my ancestors for their support, protection, and strength. Please take three breaths. And if you are bowing, you may please stand. In gratitude, I bow to all generations of ancestors in my spiritual family. You may touch the earth. I see in myself my teachers, the ones who show me the way of love and understanding, the way to breathe, smile, forgive, and live deeply in the present moment. I see through my teachers, all teachers over many generations and traditions, going back to the ones who began my spiritual family thousands of years ago. I see the Buddha or Christ or the patriarchs and matriarchs as my teachers and also as my spiritual ancestors. I see that their energy and that of many generations of teachers has entered me and is creating peace, joy, understanding, and loving kindness in me. I know that the energy of these teachers has deeply transformed the world. Without the Buddha and all these spiritual ancestors, I would not know the way to practice to bring peace and happiness into my life and into the lives of my family and society. I open my heart and my body to receive the energy of understanding, loving kindness and protection from the awakened ones, their teachings and the community of practice over many generations. I am their continuation. I ask these spiritual ancestors to transmit to me their infinite source of energy, peace, stability, understanding and love. I vow to practice to transform the suffering in myself and the world and to transmit their energy to future generations of practitioners. My spiritual ancestors may have had their own difficulties and not always been able to transmit the teachings, but I accept them as they are. You're invited to take three breaths. And if you are bowing, please stand. In gratitude, I bow to this land and all the ancestors who made it available. You may touch the earth or imagine you're touching the earth. I see that I am whole, protected, and nourished by this land and all the living beings who have been here and made it and made life easy and possible for me through all their efforts. I see Chief Seattle, 
Dorothy Day, Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King Jr., and all the others known and unknown. I see all those who have made this country a refuge or are trying to make it a refuge for people of so many origins and colors by their talent, perseverance, and love those who have worked hard to build schools, hospitals, bridges, and roads, to protect human rights, to develop science and technology, and to fight for freedom and social justice. I see myself touching my ancestors of Native American origin and who have lived on this land for such a long time and known the ways to live in peace and harmony with nature, protecting the mountains, forests, animals, vegetation, and minerals of this land. I feel the energy of this land penetrating my body and soul, supporting and accepting me. I vow to cultivate and maintain this energy and transmit it to future generations. I vow to contribute my part in transforming the violence, hatred, and delusion that still lie deep in the collective consciousness of the society so that future generations will have more safety, joy, and peace. I ask this land for its protection and support. Please take three breaths. And if you are bowing, please stand. In gratitude and compassion, I bow down and transmit my energy to those I love. You may touch the earth. All the energy I have received, I now want to transmit to my father, my mother, everyone I love, all who have suffered and worried because of me and for my sake. I know I have not been mindful enough in my daily life. I also know that those who love me have had their own difficulties. They have suffered because they were not lucky enough to have an environment that encourage their full development. I transmit my energy to my mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters, my beloved ones, my husband, my wife, my daughter, my son, my kin, so that their pain will be relieved, so they can smile and feel the joy of being alive. I want all of them to be healthy and joyful. I know that when they are happy, I will also be happy. I no longer feel resentment towards any of them. I pray that all ancestors in my blood and spiritual families will focus their energies toward each of them to protect and support them. I know that I'm not separate from them. I am one with those I love. Please take three breaths. And if you were bowing, please stand. In understanding and compassion, I bow down to reconcile myself with all those who have made me suffer. You may touch the earth. I open my heart and send forth my energy of love and understanding to everyone who has made me suffer, to those who have destroyed much of my life and the lives of those I love. I know now 
that these people have themselves undergone a lot of suffering and that their hearts are overloaded with pain, anger, and hatred. I know that anyone who suffers that much will make those around them suffer. I know that they may have been unlucky, never having the chance to be cared for and loved. Life and society may have dealt them so many hardships. They have been wronged and abused. They have not been guided in the path of mindful living. They have accumulated wrong perceptions about life, about me, and about us. They have wronged us and the people we love. I pray to my ancestors in my blood and spiritual families to channel to these persons who have made us suffer the energy of love and protection so that their hearts will be able to receive the nectar of love and blossom like a flower. I pray that they can be transformed to experience the joy of living so that they will not continue to make others suffer. I see their suffering and I do not want to hold any feelings of hatred or anger in myself toward them. I do not want them to suffer. I channel my energy of love and understanding to them and ask all my ancestors to help them. Please take three breaths. If you are bow, bowing, please stand as we bring this practice to a close. With the earth as our witness, may we continue touching it, being held by it, strengthened and supported by it without attachment, without entitlement. In appreciation for how the earth supports our living. Thank you, Ayo, for that beautiful practice. Let's sit together. We'll have a short sit. We wanted to uh, preserve as much time as possible to share with one another. So we'll sit for about 10 minutes. I think um, we can sit in silence together.
Thank you again, Ayo, for that beautiful practice and reminder of our connection to the earth and to one another and honoring this, the journey, the trials, the tears of our ancestors so that we can touch into the strength, the seeds of strength and hmm, I'll quote India Ari, courage and wisdom that were planted for us long, long ago. And this reminder that uh, even when we think we didn't get what we deserved or what we wanted or maybe even what we needed, but perhaps the intention was still there, care is still there, and ultimately our own capacity to care and honor and this kind regard for one another's is always there. And so it like raises for me this question, this trial, these weeks, that have already passed. I don't know about you, but this mounting tension, anxiety. Like what is it that we have to attend to, need to attend to, to avoid perpetuating this division, this hatred, this suffering? I was struck, I was listening, I'll confess, I was listening to the opening uh, statement today, the whole day, I listened to the whole day, which I'm not sure was wise for this heart. But I was struck by opening remarks and one of the things that stayed with me were describing a police officer's duties, one of which is the duty to administer care. And even, you know, that seems so straightforward, so simple. It's like our song, Stevie Wonder, love's in need of love today. You offer care, kindness to ourselves, to others. We show up with an intention to understand, with an intention toward moving toward one another where all of our flaws and imperfections <laughs> yeah without expectation that it will turn out in any particular way without expectation that we will get what we want or think we deserve but because showing up this way Freeze this heart from hatred. And so that was really my interest in uh, like having a truth and justice vigil, being in space together with folks who share these intentions in a time when it can be incredibly challenging to do so, or when there's far more resistance to offering up that which seems much needed, but that I can craft a story around is not yet deserved, or that somehow ill will or holding back will yield this fruit of care and connection. So I don't want to take up a lot of time because we only have a little bit of time and I know that we want to also be able to hear from you all. We're showing up with 
open heart, or maybe you're noticing a closed heart, a tender heart. And I think we also want to make sure that we have time to hear from Ayo about a little bit more about the Buddhist Justice Reporter. Thank you. How about first we, um, if people have something to say, we might need some, some additional rules of engagement because we didn't know the number of people who would be joining us this evening. We see 90 people. <laughs> and we know all 90 people have some kind of feeling <laughs> about, about all of this. Um, so to think about um, keeping your offering uh, lean, you know, being lean of speech, getting to the essence of what it is that you want to say um, without uh, creating a, a novel around it, right? So just getting to the essence. Introducing yourself, where you're from, or, or where you live now. Um, and uh, if there's anything that you can, want to say about what your needs are for support, um, and if you can make that brief, that would be welcome. How does that sound? That sounds good. Okay. And then maybe before we close, I'll say a little bit about Buddhist Justice Reporter. naming that and bringing that into the space. And there's certainly no, no one way to do this work of healing is what we are turning toward. And there's certainly value in BIPOC having space to do that on our own and white folks having space to do that on their own and ultimately, we come together to unravel this ball of hatred and fear that has been cultivated in this country for many, many, many generations. And it doesn't happen in, over the course of one trial, or we can fully expect not even the course of one lifetime. But each of our really courage to show up flawed and imperfect with this intention of turning toward care, not harming, listening. It's almost all we have right now as a path forward. Right? We throw in a little dash of forgiveness too, right? Because we will. There will be missteps, we will get it wrong, and we keep showing up. So I, I appreciate you naming where it's difficult. That has to be, that gets to be part of the conversation too. Just because we all showed up in this space doesn't mean it's easy. It means we want to be here and do this work. and that we can hold one another as we flail about or stumble about or rage or whatever it is, however we show up, whatever is moving. Practice of meditating and reflecting doesn't always result in a calm, peaceful right? state of being. The heart is full. The heart is imprinted from what happened this morning to what happened last year to events that we don't even remember because they are in our genes, in our blood. And so we practice opening to not knowing, being interested in feeling into what's arising right, without the story of how we should be. 
was a good Buddhist or a good black Buddhist or <laughs> whatever the, the constriction is that we've created right? or that we've bought into. And can we learn to be with one another in this un, unchartered way? Sitting with our own intense emotions, sitting with others who are having intense emotions and not taking it personally. Not wanting to avoid or turn away. But to be interested in all of the causes and conditions that got us right here to this moment. I'm looking straight on so that the next moment is birthing something different. <laughs> One of the things that I hope will that we'll be able to support each other with, um, if we choose to do this, is the the reminders to uh, live nobly while all of this goes down. You know, to live nobly because um, we're going to see if we haven't seen already some uh, pages from uh, old playbooks. Um, that lead to acquittals. I don't know what the outcome for this trial will be, but the playbooks are there. For example, focusing on uh, the past, someone's past actions to, to stir up the, uh, the belief that this person deserved what he got. And at Duke University, um, which is known um, for a lot of racist things, um, positive things too, but also known for a lot of racist things. I can't tell if I'm frozen or if you all are frozen. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, a toxology report on George Floyd was shared, posted at Duke University um, to demonstrate that he was high um, at the time of his arrest and that he really died not, not because he was choked to death, but because he was on drugs and he deserved to be arrested and killed. And so that's an, old, that's an old page from an old playbook. And so when we receive, you know, when we're observing these things on these, um, the absence of love, to put it this way, the absence of love, how, how do we employ our practices to, to live nobly? I personally know that I will benefit if I am practicing with a Sangha that has that same aspiration. So that's why I'm here. And I hope that you will um, support me in that aspiration, that I can hmm, that you will help me notice when I'm closing down to creativity. Because I, you know, I think about, well, I won't go into, I won't go that deep into it, but sometimes when we act destructively, it's just because we're at our wit's end about how to be creative. And I wanna be about creativity and being constructive rather than destructive. So that's my ask for this vigil, for this vigil community. Thank you.
Thank you. That's part of the the thing that that uh, looks like the final thing that lights the match that blows things up is, well, I saw what happened, all right? I saw what happened. How could it be that this person was acquitted? But, right? So our reality gets messed with. <laughs> and that's why it's really important to pay attention. What can I take in of this? And when do I need to take that bath, right? That warm bath that was talked about before to take care of ourselves to take in as much as we are able, right? Because what would, what's the, the option is to take in a lot and be deluded by it all, right? Or to be traumatized by it and negatively impacted or, or go into denial, right? So you've taken it all in and none of it, none of it penetrated or to take in just a little bit and have that little bit of truth. You know, and as Thich Nhat Hanh would say, if you take in just, the, if you touch just a little bit of the truth, you touch the entire truth. So let's just be gentle about how much we wanna take in. This is not gonna be cut and dried. Too much rides on, on this case for it to be that cut and dried. And we'll have each other in the meantime. I hope that you're able to join us um, next time, which will be uh, next Tuesday and every Tuesday thereafter until the trials conclude. Ayo, do you want to give a 30 second BJR? <laughs> <laughs> okay, time me, time me. Um, so in essence, this trial is an international uh, sensation, if you will. The world responded when George Floyd was tortured and murdered. That's the way I put it, tortured and murdered. The world responded because the world knows about police brutality. This is not just a United States phenomenon. It does play out differently here than it does in other places. But yeah, it's about the abuse of, of governmental power. Buddhists largely have been you know, struggling around uh, justice. Uh, is that what a Buddhist does? Does a Buddhist uh, pursue justice? You know, ambivalence around it and so on. So in short, a group of us got together and said, uh, we've been impacted by this. Uh, we wanna respond to it from the place of our, of our practice. Uh, we created um, Buddhist justice reporter, the George Floyd trials. It's supported by Tricycle, the Buddhist Review, um, the Katali Foundation and Common Ground Meditation Center. You can learn more about it by visiting um, our website, BuddhistJustice.com, where um, maybe within, it only gets updated once a week, it's all volunteer, only gets updated once a week. So this practice, uh, touching the earth practice may not appear immediately, but it will be on the website. Um, and then uh, vigil is, is part of, of what we're trying to do. So we want to inspire and support in particular Buddhist practitioners to move more into uh, having a voice using uh, right speech and right action and so on on behalf of people who are abused by um, police brutality, um, the criminal justice or injustice system, however you wanna call it, and uh, mass incarceration through what we do already, which is Buddhist practice. Thanks, Ayo. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, just a, a word that uh, Common Ground has been a tremendous support for this vigil. 
and uh, Buddhist justice reporter. And uh, if your heart is so moved, you can be a tremendous supporter of Common Ground Meditation Center. We are an organization that operates solely on the generosity of people just like you. Um, so when we were in person, we'd say you could come clean, you could cook for retreats, and now we're we're all in little squares and there are still operating expenses uh, to be able to support Sangha in even more programs than we had prior to the pandemic. So please visit the website, commongroundmeditation.org if you are able and so moved to support the organization. Uh, any offerings, two thirds of any offerings go to the uh, guest teachers and then we retain one third for operations for the center. Mm. So, uh, thank you all so much for your practice. And may the loving intentions and any goodness that comes from this practice tonight with one another, radiate out to our friends and families, our communities, so that the entire world may be transformed into love. May it be so. Thank you so much, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. Listen to India Ari and Stevie Wonder this week. It'll do, <laughs> do your heart good. It will do your heart good.